If you love talking about cats, but your friends and family are kind of over it, this is the podcast for you. Join your hosts, Danielle Stray Woolley and Elizabeth Calico Gearhart on the Jersey Podcasts, where everyday cat lovers share funny stories, challenging situations, and ask their questions about cats. All right, let's get right into this episode. Hi, everybody. I'm Danielle Woolley. And I'm Elizabeth Gearhart, and we are the Jersey the Podcasts. Jersey Podcasts. Yay! <laughs> and we are so excited today. We have Amelia Tran. She is the ultimate cat lover, plus she is an administrator for the Mosaic Networking Group, which I am a member of, and does events and is just connects people. And we love it's networking. Really- Oh, yeah. It's really great because it's such a resource for people. I get the emails and it's like, I need an X programmer. Oh, I have an X programmer. Here you go. And so it's really, um, it's great. So anyway, let's jump right in with Amelia. Amelia, what do you think about cats? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, well, first off, I am, I guess you'd say a, a woman of priority. So outside of managing mosaic i also am a senior marketing director um representing a couple of tech firms uh and you know in the past i have um went to the office and left my cats alone which made me really sad but now i work 100 percent remote and it's really great because honestly right now i guess you don't really see where I am, but I'm actually just in my morning bedroom that does not have pink walls. <laughs> and what are those guys doing? I have two cats. They're sleeping on my bed right now next to me. Aww. So I think it's awesome to know, like, what am I really working towards? Like, what am I really working for? And the honest truth is to really provide a better life for my cats. Um, so, and I'm saying this now while watching them and they're just like, sleeping on my pillow it's like they spend more time on my bed than than I do (laughs) oh my gosh that's so funny and for those that are not watching on YouTube she has the Simpsons background so that's why we were saying like look at my background um but I can relate to every I don't know why I was about to start singing it thank goodness I did okay fine I will everything I do is for my cats instead of I do it for you like forget about you I do it for my cats (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I do a lot for my, well, yeah, we have a house sitter when we go that takes care of the cats that they are cleaning lady. So they love her. So, but, but when she comes to clean, they all get anxious because they think I'm going to go away. Cause I'm working oh. from home all the time too. Yeah. And if I'm gone all day, like I was in the city all day yesterday, they like cling to me when I come home. It's like, Oh, thank God you're back. <laughs> That's so sweet because, um, so I have two boys. One is, I'm trying to see if like they look like any of your backgrounds. Uh, maybe the one like that's like sort of like a ta- a tuxedo with the su- the, the. That's royal- Mercutio. Yeah, my gray tabby. Yeah. Oh wow, it's hilarious. So yeah, I have one a tuxedo with my oldest. He's turning seven, and um, yeah, he's he's just the sweetest thing. He's mama's boy. Um, his name is Vader. Vader Cat Sith Lord to be very, very specific. <laughs> Love it. And he's, the, he's the snuggle bug. He's the firstborn, as I like to say. He sleeps with me every night. Um, and then his little brother, who I adopted um, two years later, is a gray tabby. And uh, he has a very different personality. He's very aloof, um, very independent, not l- less so of a mama's boy, though I know he secretly loves me. He does not like being held. He loves his own space. Um, so if there's like too many humans on the couch or on the bed, he will refuse to like nope. sleep on it. Yeah, like he wants his own space. Yeah. So, but they've really complement each other so well. And that's one of the reasons why on the topic of uh, like us being away and being actual working individuals outside of staring at our cats all the time, uh, I really, you know, adopted the second cat um, to really keep my first cat a little bit more occupied and for him to get the proper exercise and vice versa so they have each other to like run around and chase each other especially at 2 a.m um when they have the zoomies (laughs) and i we're us humans are supposed to be sleeping but hey you know whatever works for them right yeah Yeah, you just made a good point if i may jump in real quick Mm -hmm. is i've been having a lot of conversations with people who are interested in adopting through one of the rescues that i volunteer with um and many people are like well what do you mean i need two cats like if if you're looking for a kitten, they actually make it a requirement. You're not allowed to adopt just adopt just a single kitten because you have to have another playmate for that cat at home. 
Oh. It's like part of their requirements. So I've been yeah. having more and more conversations of them not realizing like, oh, and I've shared this before, but for anybody who hasn't listened to a prior episode, mm-hmm. I wish I knew about that when I took in Loki because he was a terror. But now that we have more cats for him to play with, he's mellowed out tremendously. Wow. Oh, and oh my God, your cast name is Loki. Mine's yeah. Peter and Luke Catwalker. So like, so it's really have a bit of a theme going on. Here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, and it's funny. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, and I was I was gonna address like I want to say the 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 elephant or or cats in the room. Um, <laughs> but recent articles have shown like the shelters are at max capacity, and mm-hmm. there is an adoption issue right now. Um, so like as someone that has adopted both her cats at a shelter, I specifically went to North Shore Animal League, um, just for convenience as well. Uh, I, you know, it's definitely a place for you to look at and there's tons of other adoption shelters. Is that in Chicago? No, 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 that's in Long Island. I'm that's right. You're in New York. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm based in New York. Uh, but I know there's a lots of other ones like the ACC or ASPCA, like tons of shelters, like before you, uh, think about like purchasing a cat, which I don't even know anyone that has like, be like, I bought a kitty. Like, I've I've heard of people like adopting from like seeing like a Facebook post or even on Craigslist, but like adoption's really the way to go. And I just feel that way, um, not just for cats, but like all animals. Yeah. yeah. I Definitely. second, third, and fourth that. Amen. Yeah. So mine are all strays that come to us. And Danielle's yeah. are but Danielle gets the like tough to handle strays because do any of your cats like to be picked up, Danielle, at all? No, no, none of them do. I mean, none of them do. Wow. They're they're really affectionate. So while you were talking before, I was yeah. kind of smirking because I had a talking to with them because I've been sick. <laughs> and I was like, listen, if someone doesn't come snuggle with me when I want them to snuggle with me, not just when you want to snuggle, I might be needing to get another cat that will. <laughs> yeah, like, I can hold for a few. All the other I, ones like freak out, but yeah. they'll come and snuggle with me. But I can't. Yeah, yeah. that's actually really funny because the story of how I... um. Uh, their their adopt their adoption story their got my gotcha day with them is vader um was actually my first cat ever i've always like loved cats growing up and uh when i was 17 i actually have i got, got a tattoo of a cat my, my cat too <gasps> and it Aww. doesn't mean anything it literally says always with you and people growing up would think like oh is that dedicated to your cat childhood cat that passed away i'm like nope never had one <laughs> it's <laughs> so cool it's weird it's just on my body forever <laughs> but when I adopted because it's always with you yeah yeah so when I adopted Vader um with my ex I was like okay we I woke up one day I was like no I've had it we really have to get a cat like or else <laughs> like and uh yeah he was the only kitten available like right. literally the only kitten available so I was like all right guess I got no no option no choice and when I took him home, I gave him a bath and yeah, the rest was history. Like he felt right at home. With oh. Luke, it was tricky because we went when it was uh, like an, an adoption day, Un- like unintentionally went during adoption day where they waived the adoption fees. So Luke's was a really long birth, as I like to say, instead of just, you know, going in and out because of adoption day, the shelter was madness. Um, everyone was trying to adopt a cat or dog. And it took like eight to 10 hours for us to get out of that same shelter. Oh, it's like going wow. to a car dealership, huh? But but Luke played me, you know, like, I swear to God, he was like a kitten also. And he like snuggled against my legs. So I thought oh. he was going to be like really cuddly. When I brought him home, he's like, no, I don't like being held. I got you. <laughs> Jokes on you. And I'm like, oh my God, you literally got me. You only nudged me and snuggled me because you want to manipulate me to love you and take you home and that's it yeah that cat was like i know she's gonna work hard to make my life amazing so let me just snuggle up while i can (laughs) yeah exactly and when i do travel for work which i used to um it was a little bit different uh you know back then when i when i had a partner uh because you know so sometimes when i travel for work it would like really ease my mind that someone was home to like take care of them and and nurture mm-hmm. them. And I think contrary to belief is people think like, oh, cats, you don't need to give them attention, right? And I say that's mm-hmm. not true. Every cat deserves and needs attention, even if they're not showing it. As an owner, a pet owner, you still need to really spend the time, um, not just by getting another cat, but like 
for instance, like in terms of giving them adequate exercise, like there's tons of toys out there where they can self play, or you can literally like chase them around with a string. Like it doesn't need to be expensive. Like you don't need to buy, go out there and buy toys. You literally take a USB wire or a string. Everyone's got that at home and you literally drag it around the floor and just make them run after it. Right. Like, so that stimulation is really, really important for me, especially when I was traveling. But now as a, as I'm solo, um, when I do travel for longer than a day or two, I do have a cat cam. Um, so I strategically place I it. want one so bad. I'm sorry to interrupt like you, 20, but I'll make my husband. No, like literally, it. it doesn't have to be like just made for pets. I know a lot of uh, tech brands out there. I'm not trying to crap on them. They'll try to like oversell you because it's like a special pet cam. Uh, no, you could just literally get any like Wi-Fi enabled camera um, on Amazon for like 25 bucks, honestly. And how I position it is like, because, you know, cats, they tend to like roam around or like hide in different places. When I'm away, I, it's not like I'm going to have like a zillion cameras at home that I'm going to turn on. I specifically um, shut shut my bedroom door. So I contain them to just like my living room area. And then uh, how my home is shaped is I'm just literally positioning the quote unquote cat cam on my coffee table. And it gives me a direct view of the couch and like the rest of the space. So no matter where they run, I'm mostly able to see them and their cats. So they're mostly gonna chill in the softest place possible, which is the couch, which is like where the main focal point is. And I do that specifically. Um, so again, like I can contain them and see them, make sure they're okay. And what's really great is I get to like talk into the camera so like if I miss them, they can hear me. They'll be like, wait, where's mom? I hear the <laughs> voice. So it's yeah. a really, really good investment if um, you know, you would don't have one or anyone that's listening doesn't have one. Yeah, that is a good idea. If you yeah. So do you have people come in and feed them once or twice a day then when you're gone? Yeah. Um, so I am really blessed to have uh amazing neighbors down the hall. Um, they actually have a corgi that I walk from time Aww. to time. So it's like Aww. really cool to do like a pet swap type of thing sometimes. Um, so yeah, when I am away for longer then you know, they'll come in and feed them and scoop their poop and everything like that. Uh, fortunately, these days I brought in a roommate. Um, so I actually also have someone at home that if I'm not home, like there's definitely coverage around for sure. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah. But my advice is, make friends with your neighbors because <laughs> you never know when you're going to get any pet. It could be a, a goldfish, for instance, which I fed my friends fish before. Like <laughs> make friends with your neighbors because you never know when you might have an emergency that you need to tend to for the day. Um, and they just simply need to go in and feed. So always keep your food pile for the cats um, in a really easy to find location. Uh, hopefully not open because then your cats will get <laughs> yeah. into the bag. They've done that once before. Yeah. But an easy to find location. So if you're like, hey, um, you know, I have an emergency, like left my spare key like in my mailbox under the rug or somewhere. Like, can you come in and just like keep them alive? Yeah, well, that is funny what you say about the food because Max knows there's a closet, I, a pantry cupboard that I keep the cat food in. <laughs> Oh if I go in there, he comes and he gets right in between my feet and he, he starts purring because he thinks I'm going in there to get him food and he loves his food. So, yeah. He's a, he's a silly kitty that way. Well, so what possessed you to get the first cat? You hadn't had cats for a long time. Was, did you get it right before COVID? Well, no, we're past COVID. So no, no, I've had it. You said I've you just like her. woke up one day and were like, today's the day I'm getting a cat. Yeah, well, long story short is I've always wanted to get a cat, um, but I was living with my in-laws for a while, and I could assure you my mother-in-law would not have wanted any pets outside of me, because I was already a family <laughs> pet, right? Like, oh, no. that, that shoe's been filled, I'm the cat, and she's just a neat freak, clean freak, and this is also good advice for anyone that's listening, but... Yeah, like that's kind of, well, first off, that's kind of why I never got one until me and my ex, we like moved down and got our own place. Uh, so immediately it was like cat, <laughs> moved in couch, moved in bed, next up cat. But for <laughs> okay. those that are hesitant to get a cat, like, yes, animals have hair, but so do you. Uh, <laughs> you know, I have more, my to... hair is in the house more yeah, than my cats like, are. Yeah, like I, our hairs are even longer, right? Think about it. So it's like, 
yeah um I mean, you're supposed to be cleaning your house regularly anyway, so I don't really see, like, why you're like, oh, God, extra hair. Uh, but, yeah, they, the cats do their free range um, at home. And with even with two cats, I actually don't really feel like my home is that dirty or messy. Like, there's, there's certain tricks or materials, um, such as, like, uh, if you have, like, faux velvet, for instance, um, like basically all you need to do if you see hair is take a wet cloth and like wipe the hair and mm. I've like my couch is this material that's like microfiber-ish I don't know what you mm. ladies use um I found it also really effective at like just wiping the hair off the trick you think is to lint roll but come on like how many rolls of lint roll paper are you oh gonna my eat? gosh just I take know. like a literally a wet bounty and just like wipe the dust off and if you need to tidy up a little bit more then you can follow up with lint roll but again these are things you're supposed to be doing anyways I hope to keep your home clean yeah so, if anything if you're proactively thinking like oh gosh I have to make sure there's no cat hair your house might actually be cleaner with cats than it was before <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's exactly true. And, um, you know, I like, this is debatable, but, um, I do let them on my bed. Right. I, do, do you guys, do you let yes. them? Oh, yes. I yes. beg them to come on my bed with me. And so how like do you feel with like your bedding situation? Like, does it get like about the hair and everything? So we did change our bedding for that reason. Cause we had really nice, expensive bedding that I won through uh -huh. like some contests. And I actually moved it into the guest room because they don't use it as much. And we got just like a cheap comforter on top of our stuff. So we can easily just throw it in the wash and not worry about it. You know, I've never even thought about it. So I have had cats forever. I've oh. had cats when I met Richard, my husband, and told him, you know what? It's a package deal. So <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay. Um, so yeah, I haven't really worried about it. But, but yeah, the cats are in and out. So they sleep, they love to sleep in the pillows. And my daughter took one of our pillows because she's staying with us right now she's in between she's she's 27 she's kind of in that what do I do with the rest of my life phase she wants to do the Appalachian I'm still Trail in that phase just so yeah you know. <laughs> me too uh -huh. so so she's staying with us but she took one of my pillows and the cats were like what happened to our pillow <laughs> Like, our pillow our pillow how dare you yeah I've, yeah I've said in the past I said sometimes I'll wake up and the pillows are purring and it's like you can't really see the cat because she's buried in the pillows but Lily's up there purring um so yeah they they the cats pretty much own everything in the house like there's not like yeah I agree anything that we well they do scratch the sofa so we have put like those transparent anti-scratch things on the sofa yeah. Um, but we don't buy to your point though, Amelia, really, we, and, and Danielle, we don't buy expensive sofas for the family room. Yeah, because, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Like, we, I mean, you know, um, it's about finding like the right materials that are, well, one, not gonna like attract too much cat hair or it's easy for you to wipe off. But like the second thing is also like, if you're maintaining your cat's claws, um, cause cutting their nails literally honestly, like does not take too much effort. Like, I feel like right. I may cut their nails more than <laughs> Yeah. But like, you know if you're gonna maintain it pretty frequently um you shouldn't have too much of a problem of like your furniture getting damaged too quickly like I've had my couch um which I got from like I think Wayfair for like under a thousand uh like maybe four years ago and it's just starting to like get ratty so like you suggested I did put those like transparent plastic thingies um yeah. of the area of concern as I call it and then with my bedding um one thing I do do is I actually have a, like, say, um, if I don't want them to go in a certain area, like my pillow, for instance, um, because I am like sleeping on it, and I'll give them their own pillow, you would say, whatever I don't want them to like touch or put too much fur on, I just have this like, kind of like plastic, like, mm. like, tablecloth thing that I put over an area. And that kind of keeps like a certain area of the bed really clean. Um, you know, in general, and because you know, cats hate plastic. At least most yeah. cats. Yeah. So like, well, I have one that have loves much. plastic and tries to lick it and eat it, and oh, we have to God, hide it. No. <laughs> Which one is well, that, Danielle? Thor, 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 whose name used to be Lord Licorice when we got him from the shelter. <laughs> His name was Lord Licorice, but he's the opposite of a bad guy in a Candyland game. So oh, I have to ask. Him. I have to ask Amelia this: Have you ever been to the smallest beautiful art gallery in Manhattan? The smallest beautiful art gallery? Yeah, it's really cool they do these tiny, tiny miniatures. And I was there with my 
husband and daughter and there was one of thor's hammer like on the tip of a pencil carved out of the tip of oh a pencil God. i know it was so cool so i had to take a picture and send it to danielle yeah wow <laughs> no i haven't been there i so i've lived in new york my entire life like when you define or think about a new york minute think of that as my life like for the last god knows how many years i've just like literally kept going and going and going right so i'm now feel like i'm in a good place in my life and career where uh currently i i've been 100% remote for the last few years that may change in you know the new, near future as the job market changes as well which i'm fine with and man, the first thing I thought of was like, wow, if I go into um, a, a job that's like a hybrid situation, like, can I negotiate to be like, oh, I have cats, so I need to like <laughs> stay home a little bit more often. <laughs> they have needs, they sleep all day. And, you know, who knows what might happen when they sleep. <laughs> Could you yeah. imagine like, instead of like a kid conflict, it's a cat or dog oh. conflict? I mean, it, it's not to deter too much, but it's, uh, to me, I feel like it's one and the same, right? Um, you know, like- Caregiver. Caregiver it, it yeah. can be different things. I don't have to necessarily say I'm going home to take care of my kid uh, in that aspect. I can just say I'm going home to take care of a loved one and <laughs> a cat is a loved one, right? That's Any that's HR awesome. professionals listening, let us know what verbiage we can get away with here. <laughs> I yeah, come up with God knows how many verbiage to like, I mean, working in marketing has its perks, like yeah. ideas and creativity. Like that's what keeps my uh, food on the table. Right. So if anyone's right. looking and needs like a get out of jail card, <laughs> going home to your cats. But it is, it, yeah, it is true. I mean, most of the people that we've had on the show, they're pets so we've had some dog lovers which we like dogs we just don't want to live with them but um we're dogs <laughs> this is a jersey pod dogs like just kidding no, but um but most of the people do consider their pets to be like children and yeah yeah they they really you know um i just i had a so i had read and I just want to get everybody's opinion on this, that cats sleep with people because cats feel safe when they're mm -hmm. with their humans. I kind of feel like cats kind of see things that we don't see and they're keeping us safe. And that's mm -hmm. why they sleep with us. Because my cats, always one of them sleeps with me and they kind of sometimes take turns. So I don't know. I think there's something out there and maybe in the spiritual world or something that they're seeing and they're like guarding their humans. Any thoughts? Well, I think... I think I've shared before that when I was going through like, a, I call it a health crisis. I'm, I'm fine from that one now, mm -hmm. but like they knew I was sick before I was because mm -hmm. they were being extra cuddly. And I was like, something is up. These guys are like loving on me. They were all sleeping on my bed, which is rare. Um, mm -hmm. Tony always sleeps on our bed. Some of the other ones use this for body heat. I swear in the winter, <laughs> that's why they sleep there. But for most of the time they always have eyes on us, but they have their spots. So like Loki has a spot in the corner by the dresser that he could see everything. Tony has a spot up here that he's always looking down on us, but not so much on the bed. So I think it's more of, they just sense things. They're more energetic. Yeah. What wow, do you think? That's a really interesting take. I mean, I never kind of thought about it as like like the, them keeping us safe um I think it works both ways like you know that saying of like oh you know we're choosing our cats or maybe they chose us you know like we're their entire lives whereas in comparison they're only a small part of our lives and I do feel like yeah maybe there's a ghost lurking around my home like somewhere where <laughs> Luke is apparently is not giving a rat's ass about it um but Vader on the other hand just likes to cuddle uh, so it could be that maybe he's sensing something, but I also just feel like he's just a big snuggle bug, um, just like kind of mm. in human nature, like there's going to be certain humans that are going to uh, choose physical touch as like their love language, for instance, right. I almost think like, you know, uh, certain cats, maybe it's the way they were born or raised they may be uh, more affectionate than others uh, because of yeah, different offers. personalities but, for sure. Well, and even, even without just, like them. Humans. Yeah. yeah, yeah even with oh, go ahead. We're yeah. just too excited about this yeah, topic. I know. Because um, I wanted to get... say, yeah, go ahead, Danielle. And then I want to say something about oh, Max. Oh, 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 let's start <laughs> over. Go ahead. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. 
So I wanted to say with Max, I'm kind of disappointed because when we got him, we carried him around. We snuggled him a bunch. He's part Maine Coon. He's part ragdoll. He was ragdolling on us and all this other stuff. But we couldn't treat him like the other cats because he had so many health issues when we first got him. They thought it was a food allergy. And so he really got this, this attitude of, I want to be treated just like the other cats. So now he's a little snuggly, but not much because he wants to be just like the other cats who are not very snuggly because they were wild critters when I got them because they'd already been on their own for months. So there you have it. Well, I was going to say just from on the rescue side of things, like you would think that an animal that had been abandoned or neglected and left outside would have a different personality than one that was just like born right away as a kitten but I've actually not seen that consistently. There's one cat that was about two years old, the friendliest cat I've ever seen in my whole life. And we were told that it was abused and abandoned and all of that. But that one I can pick up and hold, it would snuggle my neck. It got adopted into a family that it actually doesn't love other animals that much yet because they're not used to them, but will crawl up on their nap and just like snuggle. Whereas mm -hmm. a new kitten that only knows love because you know people are socializing it and hugging it and giving it a love. It's like, nope, that's not me. Thank you, though. <laughs> well, that's Max. He's like, I want to be like the other cats and just be put you in your place. And he's got really long arms. He's very lanky. He's a very, we don't know what all he is because he's not like a normal cat. And he'll just push you away. And he's got these ginormous paws. He's polydactyl. But Danielle, I did want to ask you, what is the name of your rescue that you work with? Um, I work with Tommy's Cats and it's based out of New Jersey. Yeah. And it's oh, TNR focused for, for those who don't know, our goal is to trap, neuter and return cats so that they don't have more. But if they're friendly, we then take them in. We work with another organization for them to handle all the adoptions and fostering. And then we foster where we can um, just so that we can really move forward with our mission on the TNR side. And then we also help out financially too. Like if a family reaches out and says, there's a cat in our yard, we can't help. What should we do? You know, we'll raise money to try to help financially support them so that they don't have to pick between saving a cat or like putting food on their table you know yeah that makes yeah. sense it's amazing so i know that we're talking about a lot of stuff and we already predicted we can go on forever yeah. i want to make sure that elizabeth you get to ask your question about what amelia is up to even though i just spoiled it and i could have just asked myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i yeah you want me to ask the question we ask everyone yeah so this yes, the question that we ask everyone is what are you looking forward to what are you excited about in your life with the cats <laughs> yeah, cats or anything uh well this is this is your you might banish me from this podcast um but I am looking forward to completing my family a little bit by hopefully um having a dog one day <gasps> and the reason, awesome. I know, <laughs> I'll allow it yeah and, well, well, and the reason I mean I thought about getting a third cat but um the reason why is like right now my boys are around seven and five um and the dog isn't going to be like an immediate thing but as a age I think um adopting like a puppy of some sort mm -hmm. will also kind of help bring a little bit of life into their older years as well too uh like it's it's definitely worth trying um I mean the other thing is I could also adopt a kitten which I probably will at some point <laughs> if once they are passing but you know I think it just it's just going to add a different I guess you could say vibe to uh to their environment um especially with a dog specifically a cavapoo they're really cuddly and also like really active when they have specific spurts of energy I think it's a really good mix for the cats because um the cavapoo isn't going to be like so energetic all the time which is going to like destroy the cats uh, <laughs> but you know when they are energetic that's going to give them all three of them time to hopefully play um and as cats age like I really think some of that's going to be needed more to keep them mobile and hopefully alive for a lot longer I love that yeah well guess what folks we are that all she wrote? time already. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's all. <blue>. Photo. <laughs> yeah. So I'm um, Amelia. I do plan to come into Manhattan to one right. of your mosaic events and Lovely. meet everybody because it's a great group. There's a lot going on. People are very active in mosaic. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned about it through networking and the people that I met at the networking thing. I'm work. Some of them I'm working with on other things. So it's really high value. Uh, it's, it's a high value group, I think. Yeah, but I think you know more about me now than some of our members in terms of they're Yay! probably so obsessed. You probably don't even know about my tattoo. My tattoo, as I call it. I, I love think, it. 
uh, ladies for having me. And you're always welcome to come to Mosaic event. As I mentioned, we generally host it at a bar um, on the third Wednesdays of every month. And our group is for people generally in the marketing industry. So whether you mm -hmm. consult legally for marketers um, or tech companies of some sort or anything related to marketing in some way. Cat rescues. We want to, we would definitely <laughs> want to welcome you because everything, and honestly, everything these days touches marketing in some aspect yep. and vice versa. Oh, awesome. everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank well, you, Amelia. Toodles. All right. Soon. All right. Everybody, Bye. thank you for listening. And you can find us online at thejerseypodcast.com. Join our Facebook community and you can also subscribe on YouTube and listen on your favorite podcast player. If you have a topic in mind that you'd like to hear, you can just reach out and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for listening. Let's keep the conversation going. Give this podcast a rating so other cat lovers can find it. Connect with the Jersey Podcasts on social media or visit thejerseypodcasts.com and leave a message sharing a story or question about cats. Thanks again for joining us and we'll catch you in the next episode.